I want to share something with you that I've learned in the decade I've spent searching for the missing in the borderlands. I've learned that security isn't safe and that vulnerability to each other and to our emotions is a powerful ethical stance. In the spirit of vulnerability, I want to confess to you that I'm nervous. What I'm going to talk about is painful. I don't know all the answers, and I'm aware of my privilege speaking on an issue that has life and death consequences for people of color around the world every day. I chose to speak because I've witnessed atrocities on the border, and I can speak without risk to myself or my family. My privilege comes not only from the color of my skin and my language, but also from having been born in a relatively economically secure country. I live in the borderlands, where I'm co-founder of the Colibri Center for Human Rights, a family advocacy organization working to end, thank you, death and suffering on the US-Mexico border. Over the past decade, I've worked with forensic scientists who care for the dead. I've spoken with hundreds of mothers and fathers as they search for their missing kids and I've sometimes been the one to confirm their worst fears. I've seen the bodies, I've held their bones in my hands. More than 6,500 unique, irreplaceable human lives have been lost on the US side of the border with Mexico since a drastic militarization process beginning in the 1990s. Colibri has records for more than 2,500 missing. I believe we haven't yet reckoned with this crisis as a nation because we haven't yet recognized those crossing the border as full human beings. White supremacy is behind this at the border as it is in our cities. We won't save lives until we believe that they are lives worth saving. I want to tell you about a few people who have acted upon this recognition of shared humanity, people among us today, people who demonstrate human acts of welcome, vulnerability, and love make us more safe than walls, fencing, or surveillance drones. I want to tell you about Elmer, who crossed the border into Texas on foot with a group. On the way, he injured his knee, and he struggled to continue. A fellow migrant took off his shirt and tied it around Elmer's knee for support. When Elmer could no longer continue, the man wrote down Elmer's family's phone number, and he called them when he got to safety. He told them about the shirt, brown and white, that he had tied around Elmer's knee. It was this shirt that helped forensic scientists identify Elmer's body. I wanted to tell you about Estella, who crossed into Arizona with her son to bring him with her to join her in the US. Shortly into the journey, Estella got ill. She had heat stroke, and she passed away under a tree in the middle of the desert. The group had to pull her son away from her body, but first he placed his jacket, little red jacket, over her body. He was five years old. He was taken to safety by strangers. Volunteers from No More Deaths and Coalición de Derechos Humanos helped the family of Lucrecia search. They searched for days, finding three bodies before finding hers. They helped many migrants along the way, and then they placed water at the spot where her body was found to help others. This is a stretcher made by a group of migrants out of tree limbs and belts and their own clothing to carry a severely injured woman, Beatrice. They carried her over mountains. She didn't make it. The migrants found Border Patrol and turned themselves in rather than abandon her body. Mike Wilson, right here in the front, Tohono O'odham man who puts water along migrant routes, is often accused of breaking the law. He says, I have to choose between two sets of laws, federal immigration laws and a higher moral universal law. I would love to be able to honor and obey federal immigration laws. But people are dying. People are dying. We can't afford to keep making trades where the cost is more private prison contracts, more family detention centers, predator drones, and death. It is unconscionable. These days, what defines our border more? Walls or the bodies of dead brown people? This is America. To not see a border wall as violent is a privileged position. There are no walls for the wealthy. There are no walls for corporations. Walls pre present themselves to the world's poor, especially those who are brown or black. Walls are what the artist Mataruda calls an architecture of fear. They come from fear and they produce fear. Walls make us sick. Wall disease was the diagnosis in Germany for suffering caused by the Berlin Wall. Our wall has already been more than 40 times more deadly than that wall. As Estella's sister said to me, love is strong. It makes you capable of crossing borders, crossing mountains, crossing seas with nothing in your hands. Love saves lives. Love brings us back to life. What I've learned in the borderlands is that migrants teach us to become more fully human. 
they provide an alternative to the politics of fear being sold at the border and beyond. And the dead call us to action. How we respond defines who we are. Thank you.